Both Tin Pot Radio demagogue Howard Sackler may not have a complete grasp of the English language, but he knows what he likes. Here he is talking about Mrs. Hansen. You know the trouble with her, Les? Sorry? She's got a problem, right? She's, <laughs> she's simplistic. Yes, well that's, that's dead wrong. And, and we can understand her. Speak for yourself. This week's program isn't about the unspeakable woman, but it is about the media's management of the Hansen story, which can't be discussed separately from its political handling. There was no small piquancy in the weekend's coverage of Hansen in Tasmania, in that the Prime Minister was provoked to a stronger response to her accusations of his role in the protests than he ever made in rebuttal of her remarks on race. Well, that is plainly stupid and ridiculous and untrue. It is a, a desperately dishonest thing for her to say. The previous weekend, her visit to Perth had been accorded all the seriousness of the Michael Jackson tour by Channel 7, which, I allow, has never really grasped the concept of journalism. Pauline Hanson flew into Perth this afternoon and into the eye of a storm. This is my first visit to WA, so it's, it's exciting. The eye of what storm? The latest snub comes from the fast food giant McDonald's. But the real highlight of Jeff Parry's report was a cardboard cutout that actually spoke. Well, Pauline Hanson joins me now. Miss Hanson, welcome. The yeah. obstacles, uh, the threats even, a lot of people would like you to see you give the game away. Maybe so, but there's a lot more that want to see me stay. The West Australian betrayed its own tabloid provincialism by giving her three pages... ...on the eve of Queensland MP Pauline Hanson's arrival in WA. Including Randall Markey's purported interview, in which all he did was wind her up and let her go. Her simple message is... Ms Hanson stands by her claims. Ms Hanson rejected Mr Howard's criticism. She had solutions. Markey's own solution was to blame John Howard's... Tough policies. Mr Howard would be better served to consider his own role in spawning support for Ms Hanson. The paper gave a column to Paul Filing, a Hanson opportunist. Pauline Hanson's comments during her maiden speech just reflected the prevailing views of the community. His enemy's enemy. After the weekend, the West gave her four more pages, including, right up there on the front page, Neil Pryor, who chose to contrast... A white man, Asians and Aborigines. And, with unintended irony, wrote of... A day that saw Aborigines abuse whites. Special mention for Channel 10's Rex Hoare, who claimed the demonstrations constituted... Two days of racial violence in Perth. Racial violence. Next day, the West's editorial called Mrs Hanson wrapping herself in the flag... Political cant at its worst. And their effort to sell newspapers on her headlines wasn't cant, but just ensuring that... Everyone knows what she is saying. That wouldn't take seven paragraphs, never mind seven pages. All this from notably inauspicious media beginnings, not much more than a year ago. Swift action from the Liberal Party today against a Queensland candidate, Pauline Hanson, who talked of preferential treatment for Aborigines. A lot is given to the Aboriginal community that is not available to the white community. It took uh, the Queensland Liberal Party about three hours to get rid of her. Endorsement withdrawn, but she's running as an independent. There is today little attention to the fact that it was Liberal voters who elected her, not the powerless, resentful and uncomprehending who attend her meetings. OK, but I, I'll, I'll cut in there because apparently we've got some extraordinary news in, uh, in Bill Hayden's old seat of Oxley, one of, one of the safe seats. For labour in Queensland. Maxine? Yeah, Kerry, it is extraordinary. You know, I stress it's, it's very yes. early. It's an early stage of the vote, but uh, what is fascinating about this seat is that uh, the Liberal candidate here, as Anthony will be bursting out of his seat, <laughs> is showing a 26% swing to her. But in fact, this candidate is not really an endorsed Liberal candidate. After that came a maiden speech whose ideas were repugnant and whose author was insignificant, but it made headlines. Among the very first to agree with her was Murdoch's man, Piers Ackerman. Mrs Hansen tries very hard to restrict her comments to things she knows about. Then she'd be as silent as the tomb. Silent Johnny Howard's approach, ridiculed by Alan Ramsey, was to congratulate himself that... 
The pall of censorship on certain issues had been lifted since his government's election. And the heavy hitters have been at it since last October. Mr Howard's strategy hasn't worked. Despite his reticence, Ms Hanson has received a mountain of publicity. He eventually thrashed the Queensland Independent MP with a feather in a manner which simply suggested he was not about to alienate what seemed to be quite a large number of sympathetic voters. Peter Robinson's comment of six months ago holds good even now. Mike Seckham agreed. Howard wouldn't engage her. Because she speaks to a subset of Howard's constituency. Malcolm McGregor in the Finn Review. John Howard squirming about in awe of Hanson's poll numbers is so pathetic. But equally he blamed... The breathless way it is all being received in the media. Nikki Savo. The fate of Pauline Hanson now rests in the hands of the Australian media. Ramsey again. Who does the Prime Minister blame? Who else but the media, just like every political leader before him when things get out of hand? At the same time, her face was selling magazines. The Bulletin, twice. And for Fairfax Good Weekend, David Lacer gave her the treatment when she unwisely took him home for dinner. Her living room of cypress pine and silky oak, the Gene Pitney song, Town Without Pity, seriously, playing on the stereo, unwrapped a stack of chops for dinner, and I informed her I didn't eat meat. Hanson raised her eyebrows and shook her head slightly. Cheap shots and unworthy. For 38 minutes, Tracy Curo stepped into the ring and scored one hit on Hanson's mother. Well, if you go back to when I was young, I was always taught the yellow race will rule the world. And if we don't do something now, until we catch up a little bit, I'm afraid, yes, the yellow race will rule the world. And that question... Are you xenophobic? Please explain. Front line, which so rarely puts a foot wrong, made a mistake in giving her a sympathetic guest spot. I represent the views of mainstream Australia. Oh really? You're not just being uh, xenophobic? Please explain. In the lowest form of journalism, talkback radio, the subject of Hanson never palls. When a clergyman rang Howard Sattler to support the Perth protests, this was the treatment he got. Can I just ask you, before Pauline responds to you, was it one of your friends who attacked the 74-year-old woman yesterday? Ray Warren on 2KY in Sydney makes curious use of the word us. I think people like you, and, and there's a lot of us around, and, and from time to time I've thought, geez, what Pauline Hanson's saying is right. But she is not Joan of Arc, and many, yeah. of, us, many of us are starting to think she's Joan of Arc. Needless to say, the parrot's on her shoulder. You think she's all right there? She's very good. Yeah, she's a goer, isn't she? Would that she would. Go. Fame and notoriety indistinguishable in her mind, Mrs Hanson launched what she's pleased to call her political party, further hardening editorial opinion. If we never hear another word from Ms Hanson, we will be eternally grateful. An ideal vehicle to carry the views of the extremists. Her audience would rather hear that there is somebody to blame than that there is nobody to blame. She is nasty and her views are dangerous. A certain amount of unanimity as to the remedy. There is a heavy responsibility on Mr Howard to condemn Miss Hanson. Mr Howard must now take a stand against the divisive and extremist view of Miss Hanson. But Michelle Grattan saw a certain hypocrisy in the media's demands. They can't walk away from responsibility and demand that Howard do something when the inflated publicity then boosts her in the polls. Remember those words. The polls. More persuasive than Bruce Petty's gentle ridicule. Well, my policy is to let Hanson fade away. And it proved to be the polls that goaded him to action, though the hammer blows of Murdoch's Sydney tabloid must have hurt. Leadership. John Howard's crucial failing. Missing in action. Mr. Wishy... ...muscles. Meanwhile, Hanson was gaining skills in the soundbite for TV. Do you want race riots, religious fanaticism, gang and drug wars? Do you want civil war? Nor did she abhor the housewife's womb, daytime TV, though she has a lot to learn. I feel that you are deceiving me and deceiving the people when I was given an undertaking and now you're going back on your word. By the end of April, the polls couldn't be denied. 
The Herald's graphic for its own poll had one nation at 25% and more, but an embarrassed editorialist wanted to disown that. It would be easy, but wrong, to superficially interpret the results. As they themselves had done. Cross-media ownership compelled Nine News to feature the Bulletin's poll. A Morgan poll in the Bulletin shows it with 10% of the national vote. Most of their support has come from disillusioned Liberal National Party voters. A very different figure from the Herald's, but here's Mrs Hanson's favourite. A phone poll by Channel 10 News. Channel 10, of course, is the news service of choice for the same powerless and bewildered constituency as finds Mrs Hanson intelligent and courageous. Little wonder then at the result. In a special 10 News poll, viewers were asked if they would vote for the controversial MPs, One Nation Party. More than 100,000 people responded. Over 51% said yes. Absolute nonsense, of course, but even the bulletin's result, 10% and most of them coalition voters, was enough to force the Prime Minister's hand. She is wrong when she suggests that Aboriginals are not disadvantaged. She is wrong when she says that Australia is in danger of being swamped by Asians. Not so much a gun held to his head as a pole pointed at his heart. Thoughtless media and an irresolute leader make for the prolongation of the disease. But we'll know when she's on the skids. That's when Ray Martin gives Pauline Hanson the treatment he gave the Paxton children. Or is Ray a bit fearful of his constituency too? Good night to you.